Okay, the first one is saying heat. Heat is energy that's transferred between object of temperature difference. Meaning what? When I made my coffee this morning, I had hot water or hot coffee added to a cold cream. There's a difference in temperature. So heat is going to transfer from the hot coffee to the cream to make them both the same temperature. So right now my coffee all over the same temperature. It's mixed together because the heat transfer from the cream, from the coffee to the cream. The cream was cold, the coffee was hot. So when you take two objects of different temperature, like a calculator and the stapler, and this one, let's say it's 100 degrees and this is 40 degrees, and you put them on top of each other, heat will transfer from this to that till they reach the same temperature. Once they reach the same temperature, we have equilibrium, thermal equilibrium. The second one is the zeroth law of thermodynamics, which sounds gibberish, but watch this. If this is a room here, and the temperature set up, let's say, at 70 degrees Fahrenheit in the room, and I have my stapler been sitting in this room, this is the stapler right here, been sitting in this room, and this is my calculator been sitting in this room here. If they've been sitting there for a while, th this and this will be the same temperature. They will call this A. We'll call this one, the room is B, and we'll call the stapler C. Object A is in thermal equilibrium with B because it's been sitting in the room for a while, they will have the same temperature. So if the, ca the calculator will have the same temperature as the room. And since the stapler has been sitting in the room for a long time, the stapler will have the same temperature as the, as the room. So this is in thermal equilibrium with B. B is in thermal equilibrium with C. Guess what will happen if I put A and C together? They are in equilibrium. Why? Because they have the same temperature. So basically saying if A equals to B and B is equal to C, then a equals to C. That's what they tell us. A equals to B. They've been sitting there for a while. B equals to C. They've been sitting there for a while. If I move A and C, put them on top of each other, they're touching each other, where the temperature can transfer, the heat can transfer, A and C will have no heat transfer there because they have the same temperature because they'll be in thermal equilibrium. That's the zero law of thermodynamics. Now, while we add it, when we measure temperature, we measure temperatures in different scales. We measure them in Fahrenheit. We measure them in Celsius. We measure them in Kelvin. So temperature in Fahrenheit can be found by taking 9 over 5 times the temperature in Celsius and add to it 32. And if you do the reverse, the temperature in Celsius, I'll do an example in a minute equal the temperature in Fahrenheit minus the 32 <coughs> excuse me times times what 5 over 9 that's how we convert back and forth <coughs> excuse me now let's say let's see I was watching a show again about um, uh, these guys in the service, when they were in Afghanistan, the military people, the bomb people, they go and sniff for bombs. And um, they're wearing these vests and they're dying from the heat. I'm going, boy, I don't know how the hell they tolerate that. The temperature in the summer in the desert, it reaches 50 degrees Celsius easily. Now, 50 degrees Celsius, well, how hot is that? Unless you've been using Celsius, we have no idea how bad the temperature is. 
So for us who live in the USA, what's the temperature in Fahrenheit? It's nine over five times 50 add to a 32. By five, that's a 10, 10 times nine, that's 90 plus the 32. Guess what the temperature? 122 degrees Fahrenheit. So when you see these soldiers in Afghanistan or in Iraq or in Dubai, these Middle East country where the weather is really warm, the desert there, in the middle of the day, that temperature is 120 degrees, 125 degrees. Then you gotta wear pants, jacket, bulletproof vest, carry 30, 40 pounds of heavy equipment on your back and your weapon, everything, and walk through that. Good luck. Do another one. I went to Quebec City one time. The temperature in Celsius was negative 40 degrees Celsius. Negative 40. I had a car that says negative 40 Celsius. Like, ah, oh, I wonder what that temperature in Fahrenheit. Let's see. 9 over 5 times negative 40 plus the 32 degrees. By 5, that's an 8. 8 times 9 is what? That's negative 72 plus the 32. What do you know? That's the only time the Celsius and the Fahrenheit, the scales, the thermometer will match at minus 40 degrees. Minus 40 in Celsius, minus 40 in Fahrenheit. How about backward? From Celsius to Fahrenheit, from Fahrenheit to Celsius. Now we know freezing temperature, I start to form what temperature in Fahrenheit? 32. So what is that in Celsius? T Celsius equals 5 over 9, 32 minus 32. You got to do what's inside the parentheses first. 32 minus 32 is 0. 5 over 9 times 0, which is 0 degrees Celsius. I also know boiling temperature, boiling, the water will boil at what temperature? 212 Fahrenheit. That's when the water starts to boil. 212 degrees Fahrenheit. What's the temperature in Celsius for that? Uh, 212 minus 32, 180. That's 20 times 5, which is 100 degrees Celsius. So that's how we convert between Celsius and Fahrenheit. That's some of the scales that we have. At home, you probably have a thermometer stuck to your window, your door, and you can look at it and see what the temperature is. And sometimes it gives you two scales. It has it in both. Just like your car, a speedometer, give it to you in miles per hour, meters per second. So if you look at the thermometer scale, it looks something like this. You find the 32 directly below that should be zero. Minus 40 is minus 40. Celsius on the inside, Fahrenheit on the outside. Now we also have Kelvin here which is absolute zero here. What's absolute zero? Let's talk about absolute zero. Oh, I missed the L.
An absolute zero. We say this is an absolute zero temperature. Absolute zero is the lowest temperature. The lowest temperature, I don't know how to write this quickly. below which it is impossible to cool an object. You're going to reach a temperature where you can't cool it anymore beyond that. It doesn't go below that number. That's your call absolute zero. So you can try to cool it, cool it, cool it, cool it, cool it. It's not going to work. Anyone knows what that temperature is? What will happen to if you watch like uh, temperature versus pressure, you know? You'll notice as the pressure decreases, the temperature starts to get here colder. So that temperature actually we're talking about negative 273.15 degrees Celsius. That's called the zero pressure, lowest pressure possible here, the temperature actually. And that's where the Kelvin scale comes in. The Kelvin scale, T Kelvin, is whatever T Celsius, you take that temperature, whatever the temperature in Celsius, and you add to it 273.15 degrees. A lot of the physics experiment I'm going to be dealing with or stories here deals with Kelvin temperature which is whatever your Celsius, add to it 273. That's called the Kelvin scale. So three ways to measure temperature, T Celsius, T Fahrenheit, and T Kelvin. And we're talking about absolute zero, which is the lowest temperature you can get any substance or anything to it, any object. You will never be able to cool it below that one. So that's the first topic in terms of temperature and zeroth law, thermodynamics and heat and Kelvin scale and everything.